Greetings ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another World of Warcraft Classic Guide. My name is Cargos, and today I am very excited to present for your viewing pleasure a comprehensive Paladin leveling guide for World of Warcraft 1.12. There is a lot to go over, but I want to start off by overviewing the class, just talking about how Paladins do uh, when it comes to leveling. I want to present a couple different talent builds for you. One's going to be a deep ret build splashing into holy, the second one is going to be uh, ret reckoning, and the third one is going to be holy reckoning. The, the next, I want to go over rotation. There's a lot of nuances to the rotation, how it's going to change uh, different stages of the game, 1 to 32. Before you have the ability to spec reckoning from 32 to 60, we can talk about uh, the, the multi-target rotation, the single target reckoning rotation, um, as well as what just the, the, the deep ret rec uh, the, the deep ret non-reckoning rotation is going to be. Uh, I've also included weapon progression and shield progression uh, in the latter slides. So I've included two-handed weapon progression all the way to 60, uh, one-handed mace, sword, and axe progression all the way to 60, as well as shields. And I've also, rec uh, I've also uh, included AoE grinding locations from 32 to 60, right? Because that's going to be the earliest you're going to be able to AoE grind as a paladin. Um, we'll also talk about various tips and tricks and nuances that you you know that that, that these more experienced paladins have uh, have learned over the years, and we'll share some of that stuff. And we'll talk about uh, what stats you're going to go for, things of that nature. So let's get started. All right, before we begin, I need to quickly shout out uh, my collaborators on this project: Oak and Licks, Poeo, Camelot, Thelaras, Killer Dookie, Space, and especially Lestor. Lestor was incredibly hands-on. He's been helping me so much this past week. He's a very experienced paladin with uh, Corrupted Ashbringer. Th he just got Thunder Fury. He's just, he's, uh, he's seen it all. So thank you so much, guys. All right. Uh, class overview. So let me just uh, let me just kind of overview the class. So paladins have built up a reputation in vanilla for being slow levelers, like tier three levelers, right? You ask any seasoned warrior player, they're gonna tell you paladins are the slowest levelers. You ask any you ask any paladin player who's the slowest levelers, they're gonna say warriors. Um, and this is kind of the perspective I went into this uh, with. But the more I, I learned about the paladin class, and the more paladin th paladin enthusiasts I spoke with, the more excited I got about paladin leveling, and the more optimistic I, I felt towards paladin leveling. So I'll describe the general flow to you. So basically, from one to thirty-one, or one to thirty-two, rather, you're going to be. It's going to be pretty slow. You're below the median when it comes to to. You're, you're considerably below the median when it comes to kill speed. The kill speed is pretty slow. Uh, your movement speed is a bit subpar as well. You get stuff like Pursuit of Justice, which definitely helps, um, but that's also an issue. Um, and, you know, there's, there's definitely going to be a lot of auto attackings. You've seen the Paladin memes of, you know, auto attacking your way to victory in 18 days played. There's definitely some of that. But then once you get to 32 and you're able to respec to Reckoning, which is a tier 5 talent in the protection tree, you are, you are a beast. You are a force to be reckoned with. It is actually insane. You are one of the only classes that actually benefit from fighting multiple mobs at once. You can fight five, six mobs at the same time. Um, you can solo elite quests. You can you can solo group content. You are self-reliant. You have high sustain. It is it is pretty insane. And you can you not only are you soloing multiple mobs, but you're doing so with very little downtime as well. So the thing is, when you're fighting multiple mobs, you can build Reckoning stacks faster. The way Reckoning works is like, when if a mob with like even 1.0 attack speed hits you and you build a stack of Reckoning, it's sort of like you hitting them back immediately, uh, regardless of what whatever weapon speed you have. So even if you have a big chunky 3.8 um, attack speed weapon, that Reckoning stack is going to effectively act like like you just auto attacking them right back, um, but we'll get into that more more of that later. So they also have some really cool, flavorful things like they have uh, the ability to have 100% uh, spell pushback immunity if you get a few talents in holy. I just found a lot of really interesting things about a paladin, so um, it was really fun making this video. I gotta say. All right, so the pros of leveling a paladin: you can perform all three group roles comfortably uh, throughout the leveling stages of the game. You can DPS, you can tank, you can heal. Even at 40 plus, even if you're full ret. You can heal, no problem. Just throw on a blessing of light. You can downrank your holy your holy light spells. You're good to go. It's no problem. So that I find that really really cool. If you want to tank, you can throw a couple points into improve righteous fury. And you're good to go there. Um, so you can also solo elites and group content. You have incredibly high group utility. You know you are just beloved by groups. Um, you have high sustain. You're a self reliant class. Bubble Hearth is a pro. Maybe I should have put that on here. Um, capable of AOE grinding, which is really uh, just a fun uh, option. And then you get a free mount at level 40. So how cool is that, man? Um, cons, 
they have a tier three leveling speed, but I, I sort of am, am, am leaning towards potentially putting them at a tier two leveling speed after everything I've learned, as long as Reckoning is going to uh, continue to, uh, uh, you know, function in the same way come, come Classic. Um, slow levels 1 to, 30, 1 to 31 or 1 to 32. Low mobility, no on-demand slow. That was a bit bizarre. Uh, you have limited CC potential. You're really only uh, limited to your Hammer of Justice and your, uh, and your Repentance. Uh, you are, you know, sort of have a medium gear dependence. It's kind of a con. Um, you can't use staves. That was a, a small point, but definitely an impactful point. When I was putting together the weapon progression, I really noticed the impact of this. There's a lot of badass staves as you go about your, your way leveling. Um, stuff like... Uh, the Staff of Westfall, Resurgence Rod, you know, some real, really good staves, um, and you can't use them, which is a bummer. Um, you're also pretty vulnerable out in world PvP. You don't have a lot of mobility. You don't have a lot of gap closers. Um, so, yeah. This next slide is just talking about Paladin terminology. If you see some of these terms used, like an SOC or something, you can always go back to this slide and uh, reference it. By the way, there will be a link down in the description to the presentation. I, I should probably do a better job at announcing that. So you can click the link in the description or in the comment section, and you can kind of follow along with me at your own pace, or you can just watch the video. All right. So, um, we're going to talk about races real quick. So, if you don't know how races work in uh, vanilla, uh, all the different, you know, races like human, dwarf, night elf, they all have different uh, primary base stats. You can see them right here. So, humans have like 20 across the board, spirits at 21. And then, depending on what class you're playing, you have a slight modifier to them. So, pallies get plus 2 strength, plus 2 stamina, plus, plus 1 spirit. So, then that, that nets out to base stats like this. Humans have slightly less strength. They have slightly more agility, yada, yada, yada. Um, so humans really have the edge in PvE. The plus five skill to swords and maces is, is impactful for a couple ways. You can build more TPS if you're protection. You can, uh, you know, there's something with the with the uh, with the glancing blows and uh, the, the basically it, 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 it nets out to like like a five percent damage increase or something like that. So it's actually pretty impactful. The uh, skill sort the sk plus skill to swords and maces. Other than that, there's not a whole lot there. Spirit is not very valuable for a paladin. Um, Classes that can self-heal don't really get as much value from Spirit. Uh, and then in, in PvP, Dwarves are going to have the edge there. They don't really bring anything to the table with regard to PvE, but Stone Form is something, and it's definitely, you know, something in immunity to bleed, poisons, diseases, and the plus 10 armor is, um, you know, nothing to laugh at. All right, so general leveling, leveling tips. This is kind of like a disclaimer I put for every class, but I think it's important. I wouldn't want to not include this stuff in a leveling guide. So, And there's some new information here, so if you've heard me say this stuff a million times, hang in there. Um, ideally, you should be killing mobs at the same level, uh, same equal level to you, because these are the only mobs that are going to grant you 100% of their base XP reward value. Now, the, the, the following slides are going to explain this a little bit better, but... I mean, and this is not always going to be the case, but if you kill a mob that's even one level below you, you can potentially shave off 20% less XP re uh, relative to their base XP uh, reward values. If you're killing a mob that's higher level than you, you get only a very marginal benefit to killing them, right? So it's still oftentimes going to be worth it to kill the higher level mobs, but it's just an efficiency equation that you're going to have to factor in. It's on slides 10 and 11, so we can look at that. Um, so you're, gonna, gonna, you're a mana user as a paladin, right? So you're going to want to front load your spells and abilities to get that, that, ma that natural mana regeneration per the five second rule ticking again as soon as possible, ideally finishing mobs off with white damage if it's going to be efficient to do so. But then again, you know, keep everything regenerating and on cooldown, and that piggybacks onto the, the next point here. Push the limits of your combat efficiency. If you are sitting at full resources, whether you're an energy user, you have mana, or just talking about your health, if you're sitting at full resources, you're probably misplaying. You need to be more aggressive about chain pulling. You need to take more calculated risks. You need to expend more resources per kill. Do whatever it takes, but keep things regenerating and on cooldown. If you're at low health and lay on hands is off cooldown, use that bad boy. What are you waiting for? Um, anyway, be adaptive with your damage rotation cycle. This is true for most class. It's not as impactful with paladins, I have to say. You know, you know, compared to like a warlock or something. That's the one that comes to mind. That's like the most, um, the most dynamic. But you know, don't overkill stuff. Don't underkill stuff. Find a really good harmonious balance between spending resources and generating resources. And uh, just kind of think. You know, think: Is the mob higher level, lower level? Does it have high armor? How should I, how should I adjust to best take this thing out? All right, so this is a new slide, leveling speed equation. So your leveling speed in Classic WoW is the sum of three factors. Your in-combat time, 
That's your, your time you're, you're spent killing the mobs, right? Your kill speeds. Uh, your out of combat time. Now, this is basically defined as the amount of time that you, like, mandatory time you need to spend regenerating, eating, drinking, healing, whatever it is, so you can get yourself into a combat ready state again. And then the third factor is going to be travel time. And because the, the metric we're dealing with is time, all three of these are equally as important. So shaving off two seconds of co in, in combat time versus, let's say, 10 seconds in travel time. What's going to be more advantageous to choose? The travel time. And this, the, mo the more juicy point here is the out of combat time. So people, we're going to be bluff buffing Blessing of Wisdom over Blessing of Might. And that's what, why I wanted to include a slide like this. And people are, are, are it may seem, ca seem counterintuitive, like, why are you going to bless Wisdom? You know, I want to increase my damage, right? You know, the best defense is a good offense. Or I think it's actually the reverse of what that's saying. But um, being able to reduce your out of combat time. Uh, by potentially like five seconds versus reducing your in combat time by two seconds, it's still going to be better to, to, to choose to, to decide with that out of com combat savings, right? If that makes sense. So a penny saved is a penny earned. Keep it in mind. Um, all right. So here's the, um, the slides I was talking about, the percent XP gain per mob level. Early on, it's really dramatic, man. Like if you are, look, if you are level seven or something and you're killing a mob with uh, that's one level lower than you, you're losing 20% XP. Two levels lower, you're losing 40% XP. Three levels lower, you are losing 60% XP. That is crazy. If you're killing a level four mob and you're level seven, you're getting 40% XP. It's just, it's, it's, and it works the other way too. So this is an interesting thing. This was, this information is courtesy of, uh, of, of a guy named Navak. He hit me up in Discord. He was kind enough to share this information. I'd never seen anything like this. This is incredibly useful for me. I'm going to be using it as a resource and, uh, you guys should too. So, um, show him some love. All right, so paladin specific tips. We have a lovely picture here of Lestor, the god who helped me with this guide and with his with his you know sexy corrupted Ashbringer on, um, and he got his Thunder Fury, which is just the dream. Um, but the most important aspect of paladin we of a paladin weapon is its damage range, which is correlated to its weapon speed. So they're kind of two of the same. Um, but this this is this is for a variety of reasons. One, the nature of Seal of Command. It's going to proc seventy. It's going to proc. Seal of Command is balanced with a 7 ppm, 7 procs per minute. You can't get it to proc more, but you can get it to proc harder. You can get it to hit harder, and it's based off of your weapon your weapon damage, right? So it deal, it, it's always going to do, no matter what rank it is, it's going to do 70% of your weapon damage. Having that higher weapon damage is going, to, is going to move the needle more than just the DPS number. Also, the, the, the nature of Seal of Righteousness, the nature of Seal of Righteousness. So we're going to be use, using Seal of Righteousness from 32 onwards because we're going to be using Reckoning. When you get Reckoning, you only use Seal of Righteousness. Seal of Command, only the first Reckoning hit will benefit from that Seal of Command, whereas opposed to Seal of Righteousness, all of the, the rec stacks will benefit from Seal of Righteousness. So that's just the number one case for why you're going to use SOR over SOC. All right, so you can also easily, easily heal. We talked about this. A little Snapple cap here. Judgment is not on the global cooldown. And you're going to see that how that's going to impact our rotation later on. Um, also, just like many other classes, you can save gold by skimming off a few abilities. You can you can save by not buying higher ranks of Hemorrhage Justice or even buying the base ranks of, of abilities like Exorcism, Turn Undead, Blessing of Sacrifice, Holy Wrath, Seal of Justice, Auras. But at the end of the day, you know, play in a way that's going to make you happy. If you want these abilities, go for it. Knock yourself out. Um, so another thing is you may not need all four stack of stacks of reckoning to kill a mob. If you do, still if you don't know what reckoning is, uh, that's okay. You know, just it's fine. We're gonna explain it in a little bit. But you may only need two to three. For those of you who know what reckoning is and how it functions, you may only need two to three. So don't overkill stuff for no reason, right? Um, you can just make that judgment call as you're feeling it out. We talked about steel of command proccing uh, off the first auto attack of a reckoning bomb. Um, okay, your paladin mount. Your paladin mount is a spell and will trigger a pause in natural mana regeneration. It is also not castable while your GCD is finishing. And I heard many warlocks who are like really into speed leveling. They just, even though they get a free class mount and it's, it may seem like a really juicy benefit, they will actually go ahead and just purchase a regular mount because that's so annoying. And uh, that could be the case for paladin as well. If you're really trying to push a good time, you may want to consider just buying a regular mount. All right, useful add-ons. A swing timer. A swing timer is super important. Uh, I, you know, a swing timer is going to be important for like a warrior because you're going to be doing the hamstring method, kiting stuff around. But it's very important for a paladin as well. Not only are you going to move, you know, weave your seals and, and abilities between cooldowns in your swing timer, just like any other melee class, but you also have to track the swing timer of the of, of whoever of your enemy that you're fighting. 
And this is really impactful when it comes to the single target reckoning rotation, which we'll talk about later, because you're going to want to do a, a forward slash sit macro right before your enemy's swing timer is resetting. So you want to be able to monitor that. And you you know that is your number one priority. You cannot miss that. If they're once they're once you see their swing timer resetting, you got it. You got to sit down and get that stack. Um, so this is going to be really critically important on a paladin. The next thing is an XP per hour tracker. Why not? It's really good. Tracks your EPM, your EPM, your EPH, your average XP per kill. Very, very useful. Um, you guys were asking for this. You, you provided that feedback in the last video, so you can go ahead and click these links, and it will take you right to the place where you can get the add-on. The, uh, the you need a rec counter. This is a Paladin-specific add-on that helps you track your Reckoning stacks. Reckoning stacks, the only other way to really track it is to kind of uh, listen for your readout proc. It makes a little sound, but other than that, there's not really a good way to track them, so getting this add-on is very helpful. The next thing is Outfitter. This is something that's grown on me a lot. It's a tool that's going to allow you to swap gear back and forth really easily. So even though Spirit is not all that beneficial for a Paladin, it's still if you if you find some pieces with some chunky Spirit, man, keep those those pieces. And then you know as you're moving from pole to pole or whatever, just throw on those pieces real quick. All right, let's talk about seals. This is a bit of a tricky thing to explain. Uh, seals can be pretty confusing and, and overwhelming for a newer paladin player so i'll try and break it down in the simplest way possible so if you do decide to go with the reckoning build uh, from 32 onwards you will be using seal of righteousness this will be your bread and butter your go-to you will not use seal of command this is because seal of righteousness functions uh, with much more synergy with rec reckoning than seal of command does with seal of, seal of righteousness you're going to be able to get value from it from every single one of your reckoning attacks in, in a wreck bomb whereas opposed to seal of command you will only get value on the first attack on a wreck bomb so that right there makes it a complete not, not complete non-starter seal of righteousness is going to be better once you have reckoning so pre-32 uh starting from the point where you get seal of command up until when you respec at 32 you will ideally best case scenario be using seal of command as your bread and butter but only if you have a weapon that's going to support it now, what do I mean by a weapon that's going to support it? The breaking point is attack speed or weapon speed. So if you have a weapon that's, that has a weapon speed of 3.5 seconds or slower, this is best case scenario, you're going to be using Seal of Command. If you have a weapon that is 3.4 seconds or faster, you will use Seal of Righteousness. I hope that makes sense. So Seal of Command is uh, balanced in kind of a very bizarre way. It's balanced around 7 ppm or procs per minute. So it's going to proc 7 times a minute no matter what. You're not going to be able to get it to proc more, but you can get it to proc harder. So how do you get it to proc harder? With a slow two-handed weapon with high top end. And, uh, and, and so, so that's, that's, that's kind of how that's seal of command for you. So seal of crusader, seal of the crusader, you're not really going to ever use the seal portion of this ability. You will judge it though. And you will be judging it on fights that last longer than 30 seconds, stuff like bosses or elites where you can extract full value from the bonus holy damage and be able to refresh the duration with melee attacks. This is where seal of the crusader shines, but there is some there is kind of a strange story to Seal of the Crusader. So for the longest time, for potentially years, private servers had Seal of the Crusader incorrect. It was functioning uh, improperly. And you were getting this bonus attack power and you were getting this uh, bonus attack speed, but you weren't getting the drawback of reduced damage on each attack. And this just made Seal of the Crusader bis and uh, it, it, it shifted the meta, you, you spec'd out differently, you took different talents just to optimize the, uh, the value from Seal of the Crusader, and now it's functioning in a Blizz-like fashion on, on the servers like Northdale, and from the Paladins I've spoken with, they've noticed a substantial difference in Seal of the Crusader. So Seal of Righteousness has now become better for, those, uh, for the fast attack speed weapons. Anyway, so yeah, you will judge it on, uh, on bosses and elites, stuff that's gonna survive 30 plus seconds. Um, Alright, so also Seal of Light and Seal of Wisdom. So Seal of Light is what you're going to use on multi-target reckoning. Okay, you're going to both judge Seal of Light and use Seal of Light. And if you run into a situation where you have ample health and it's not a concern but you're low on mana, you will use Wisdom. Um, so you kind of have those on-demand resource generation tools, which is kind of cool. Alright, so now we're going to talk about life from 1 to 32. This is before you respect to a Reckoning build. Um, this is the setup and rotation. So we talked about the wep which weapon, which seal to use based on your weapon speed. You're going to buff Wisdom over Might. 
unless mana is a complete non-issue and you have to tempo out damage. Blessing of Wisdom is incredibly strong. It's going to dramatically reduce your downtime and allow you to judge on cooldown, or at least much more so judge on cooldown than, than otherwise. And the 20% attack power bonus is is really not that much. It's gonna it's really gonna barely shave any seconds off of your kill speed. Uh, Wisdom is just going to be better here for a variety of reasons. Um, if you are fighting two plus mobs, use Retribution Aura. If it's single target, use Sanctity. The rotation in a short fight is going to be like this. You're going to apply the Seal of Choice, whether that's going to be Seal of Commander or Righteousness. You're going to hit the mob with the auto attack to get your swing timer on cooldown. Immediately followed by a Hodge and a Judgment. Now. Seal of Command does basically double damage if a target is stunned or incapacitated, right? So if it's either Repentanced or Hodge, you'll deal double damage. So ideally, you have that slow weapon. You Hodge, Judge, and reapply your Seal all within the cooldown in your auto attack. And it's, it's definitely possible to do so because Judgment is not on the global cooldown. So you should be missing no damage. You should not be clipping into your auto attack um, whatsoever. So then you're going to proceed to chunk down the mobs with white attacks and then uh, judge on cooldown and reapply seals if necessary. But the mob may be close to death. In that case, there's no point to judge it. Get that five, get that mana regeneration ticking back up per the five second rule. Don't bother. The rotation in a long fight is going to be somewhat similar, but you're going to judge seal of the crusader. Um, and potentially skip Hammer of Justice if the mob is going to be immune to stun or if you need to save it for whatever reason. Um, just uh, make the decision as the circumstances dictate. So I've been talking a lot about Reckoning. Reckoning this, Reckoning that. What is Reckoning? I kind of want to take a few steps back and explain Reckoning a little bit more if you don't know what it is. So Reckoning is a Tier 5 talent in the Protection Tree. When fully ranked out 5 out of 5, it will give you a 100% chance to gain an extra attack after being hit critically. Now this tooltip is kind of ambiguous. What does that mean? Do you just like instantly auto-attack them back? No, you gain these Reckoning stacks, these Wreck stacks, and you can build up these Wreck bombs. And this stack... Uh, well, well this, this buff you get will not go away. It's, it will only go away when you use it. You can mount up, there's no, there's no duration on it, it's going to dissipate. So you can effectively build up this wreck bomb, it can stack up to four times, and then just save that bomb for, you know, when, when you need it, and then dish out massive burst damage. So anyway, why is this good? Uh, it's good because we can control when we get crit. And the way we can control when we get crit is by sitting down in combat. Now, warriors have to do this to proc and rage. Paladins have to do it to proc reckoning. So you're going to literally forward slash sit in combat and build up these rec stacks. Uh, and the, the way it works in, in classic, if you're not familiar, is if you're sitting down, any physical attack made against you will crit you with 100% chance. 100% chance guarantee. Um, spells will not function in this way, so if you're hit with a fireball and you're sitting down, it's not going to crit you. It's only physical attacks. But it will also push out mechanics, it will push mechanics like parry and stuff off the table. So it's something, you know, interesting to consider. So that is what Reckoning is. Alright, so we're going to talk about multi-target rotation uh, for Reckoning. So you're going to start ideally with a one-hander and a shield equipped. Uh, you have Readout, which is just one of the best talents in the game. It's going to help you mitigate a ton of damage. It's just so good. Um, it's also It'll also help you count your reckoning, um, your reckoning stacks. And then you're going to buff Blessing of Sanctuary. Blessing of Sanctuary will really shines when you're fighting multiple targets. It both mitigates damage and deals damage. Um, helps you with that AoE farming. You're also going to have Retribution Aura enabled. And if you have any uh, shield spike of any sort, have that applied as well. You want as much reflect damage as possible. All right, so then the rotation is going to be this. Since it's multi-target, you're going to be using Seal of Light. You're going to cast Seal of Light and pull multiple mobs, as many as you can handle. This may be three fours, could be five six. Uh, you're just going to have to feel it out. So once they're all gathered, you're going to attack one and then just sit down immediately with your sit macro. Now, you're going to keep spamming the macro until you get the appropriate amount of Reckoning stacks to one-shot the mob. This could be three stacks, could be four stacks. And then you're going to do something really weird and counterintuitive. You're going to turn around and face the opposite direction and then judge the mob. So judgment works in a weird way. It, you don't have to be facing the mob. You can be facing any direction, 360 degrees, and you still be able to judge a mob. And this has been confirmed on vanilla. This is, this is, it's always functioned this way. So you're going to turn around and judge them. Why are you going to do this? You, why? Because you don't want to waste your reckoning without a seal applied. And as soon as you judge, the mechanics of the game are going to make you attempt to auto-attack the mob. 
So as soon as you judge, your character is going to start trying to auto attack the mob, and you may waste your whole reckoning stack without getting any value from the uh, the on hit effects of a seal. So you're going to turn around and judge to make sure you don't auto attack. While you're still turned around, you're going to reapply a seal. Then you will turn around and then expend the wreck bomb, getting full value from the on hit effects. You're going to rinse and repeat this, and this is going to be your multi target rotation. So now we're going to talk about single target reckoning rotation. We're going to be using righteousness, of course. It doesn't really matter if you're using a two-hander or a one-hander. It's still going to be very efficient. You're going to buff wisdom. Sanctuary really shines, again, against multiple targets. Against one target, wisdom is going to be better. Uh, you're going to use retribution or devotion aura based on the attack speed of the mob. Higher attack speed, you can use retribution aura. Lower attack speed, you can use devotion aura. Not going to make a huge deal, but it doesn't cost anything to switch auras, so you might as well. So this is going to be the rotation. You're going to cast Seal of Righteousness. You are going to um, melee the mob once and then start sitting down, hitting that sit macro, working your way up to three, four stacks, whatever you're going to need to uh, dispatch of that mob. So once you're ready to release your reckoning, uh, your reckoning bomb, you're going to melee the mob, followed by a judgment, followed by a reapplication of the seal if the circumstances dictate. The mob may already be dead right after reckoning, so there might be no need to reapply the seal. Uh, you can also attempt to build reckoning stacks by sitting down only before your enemy's swing timer is about to reset. So your enemy has downtime between its swings as well, right? So you can try and weave in a couple auto attacks as well, um, sitting down right before they hit you, if that makes sense. This is the deep retribution splashing into holy setup and rotation from 32 to 60. This is a build where reckoning is, is not part of the equation. It's going to look kind of different. You're going to ideally have a, a, a slow two-hander with a high top end with a seal of command. You're going to apply seal of command, run up to the mob, and auto attack it. As soon as you complete that animation, you're going to hit it with the hammer of justice. Uh, judgment combo followed by reapplying that seal between you know the cooldown and your swing timer and then uh, if at any point you proc vengeance that's the that's the deep uh, that's the deep talent in ret you will consecrate and you want to consecrate without clipping into your auto attacks of course you're going to do it in the interim period between your auto attacks but this is when it's efficient to use consecration consecration is usually very mana inefficient um, but if you proc vengeance, you can go ahead and use consecration as well. You're going to get consecration really late though. It's like 51 or something if you go this deep retribution build. Um, and then when the mob gets low, you can use hammer of wrath to finish it off. That's kind of the execute finisher for ret. It, it's actually pretty decently mana efficient. So you can do that um, if the circumstances dictate. All right, so let's talk about ret reckoning. We're, I'm going to take you through the talents, the order of operations. This is this is um, going to be the fastest way to get to 60. So we're gonna we're gonna tab over to the uh, the talent calculator. All right, so we're going to start off by putting five points into Benediction. This is going to reduce the mana cost of our Judgment and Seal spells by 15%. Now, it, might, it may seem counterintuitive. You may be thinking you want to go in with Improved Blessing of Might, but uh, again, like we stated before, the Improved AP, especially early on, is going to do very, very little as far as pushing your kill times. Getting this mana, uh, mana cost reduction is going to be much more impactful. So then we're going to move right into 2 out of 2 Improved Judgment, uh, decreasing the cooldown on Judgment by 2 seconds. We're going to attempt to judge every cooldown and to sustain through that with Blessing of Wisdom. Um, so that's the game plan. Then we're we're going to move into parry three out of five parry is good it gives you some additional survivability it also gives you a dps increase in the form of parry haste so now we're at a crossroads where we can immediately jump into seal of command in an ideal world you may be lucky enough to have smites mighty hammer at this stage of the game then by definitely go right into seal of command that'll be great but if you don't have a weapon that's going to support seal of command right away you can delay it a little bit and go pursuit of justice first uh just for a general build we're going to go seal of command first and then we're going to follow that with two out of two pursuit of justice Pursuit of Justice is a fantastic talent for Paladins. It increases both mounted and dismounted movement speed by 8%. Uh, in, the, in the end game, this is really good because this allows you to get a, diff, uh, a DPS enchant on your boots. Um, you know, it's really, really good for a variety of reasons, and it's, it's uh, you know, definitely something you want to rush down and take. Then after Pursuit of Justice, we're going to go 5 out of 5 into Conviction, increasing your chance to get a critical strike with melee weapons by 5%. Obviously fantastic. Then we're going to go finish off Parry 5 out of 5. This is going to open up the next tier. So at this point, we're going to get Sanctity Aura, 1 out of 1. This is going to help us with our single target damage, uh, followed by 1 point into 2-handed weapon specialization. 
we are level 31 now and we're going to respec at 32. So once we respec at 32, we're going to go, you know, it's not going to matter the exact order of operations, right? Because we're respecing, but uh, we're going to pick up precision, redoubt. This is just such a good talent. It increases your chance to block attacks with your shield by 30% after being the victim of a critical strike. So, so good um, with the reckoning build. So three out of three into precision hit is obviously phenomenal. Um, phenomenal uh, then we're going to go two into guardians favor this has some good pvp applications and when you factor a little bit of reality into here then this is going to move the needle more than just five percent on devo or alone and toughness uh, this is this uh, a lot of classes have an ability uh, a talent like toughness and it's proven just mathematically to be pretty pretty terrible even if even with like druids druids have this and even with the modifier of bear form it ends up doing very little um so after we're going to get three to three shield specialization we are going to pick up one uh one talent point into blessing of kings uh this is just going to be for group group type content there will be classes that benefit a lot from blessing of kings um now you're at a crossroads right now where you can start putting points into toughness if you are just dead set on not doing any group content and not tanking like you just you don't plan to tank at all then definitely don't get righteous fury if uh and, and go into toughness you might as well it's going to be better than defense defense is going to be completely useless and improved diva aura is, is terrible but uh if you do want to tank then you can start putting points into improved righteous fury increasing the amount of threat generated by your righteous fury by 16 percent so we're going to put one into toughness we're going to put three into improve hammer of justice we're going to go back up and put two more points into toughness then we're going to go reckoning three out of five so this is going to bring us to 32 this is what we're going to look like right at 32 when we respec all right so we're going to continue down through the protection tree like this we're going to put two more points into reckoning and then we're going to put one point into blessing of sanctuary now at this point we're going to go back into the retribution tree we're going to go five out of five benediction we're going to we're our game plan is basically to rush back down to pursuit of justice we're going to go two into the improved judgment one two three into deflection and we're going to go right for pursuit of justice there's no point to use seal of command anymore we're not going to take this talent so after pursuit of justice we're going to go um we okay after pursuit of justice we're at a crossroads right now so we got what we wanted out of the retribution tree now you're at a point where you have to decide whether critical strike is going to be better than one-handed weapon uh, damage. So ideally, when you're doing multi-target reckoning AOE grind, you're going to be using a shield and a one-hander. And crit, crit, while it is probably the most important thing ever for a retribution, like a deep retribution paladin, for a reckoning-based paladin, it's not going to do that much for you. So we're actually going to go back into the protect protection tree and get five out of five one-handed weapon specialization, followed by holy shield. After we get these, we're going to go back into Retribution, get 5 out of 5 Conviction, and then just finish with 2 into Improved Retribution Aura. But the last point is going to be insignificant because we're going to respec at that point. So if you did want to shave a bit, shave points off Toughness and put them into Improved Righteous Fury and do some tanking, that's probably more optimal. This is just if you don't plan to do any tanking, put them into Toughness. Uh, Holy Shield is going to be good for tanking as well. It's going to have some nice applications there. Uh, and then... Um, the one-handed weapon specialization and just because you have one-handed weapon specialization doesn't mean you have to use a one-hander all the time you know what i mean it's not the biggest deal to switch to, to use a two-hander from time to time if you have to if your seal of light has fallen off in the later stages of a level bracket um that was actually a tip shared by some of the paladins you get seal of light ranks every 10 levels so like you're starting at 30 then 40 then 50 so in the latter half of the of the level bracket like 30 to 40 seal of light tends to start falling off the sustain starts getting a little bad and you can switch over to two-handed single target reckoning all right so we're going to go back over to the powerpoint so the core assumption with that build is that aoe grinding uh doing multi-target with sanctuary redoubt and reckoning is going to be the fastest way to 60. So now we're going to talk about a full-on retribution build like a deep ret going into holy uh secondarily so we're going to start off the same way, 5 out of 5 into Benediction, 2 into Improved Judgment, 3 into, a par into Parry, 1 into Seal of Command, 2 into Pursuit of Justice, 5 into Conviction, finishing off Parry, opening up this next tier, moving into Sanctity Aura, 3 out of 3 into 2 ended Weapon Specialization. We are now at a crossroads where nothing is really that good, so we're just going to drop a point into Improved Seal of the Crusader. At least it's going to give us some small impact if we're going up against bosses or, or targets that are going to survive for an extended period of time. Uh, then we're going to move right into 5 out of 5 Vengeance. Vengeance is very core to your success as a Retribution Paladin. It gives you a 15% bonus to physical and holy damage you deal for 8 seconds after dealing a critical strike from a weapon, swing, spell, or ability. So, you know, asking Lestor about Deep Retribution, it's his favorite spec to play. He's saying that he can't think of another stat more valuable to Retribution Paladins. Crit is really important, and uh, Vengeance is uh, is very, very strong. So, uh, we're going to get Repentance as well. Repentance will allow you to burst harder with Seal of Command if you need it, and it also does offer some CC 
uh, just some limited CC. So at this point, we're going to move over to the holy tree because there's really no point of going into uh, to, to protection. It's not going to do all that much for you. So we're going to go five out of five divine strength. And then we're going to go 5 out of 5 spiritual focus. So the cool thing about spiritual focus is when he's fully ranked, it gives your flash of light and holy light, so your casted spells, a 70% chance to not lose casting time when you take damage. So if you use concentration aura, concentration aura gives you a 35% uh, sort of immunity to push back or whatever the verbiage is. So it stacks with spiritual focus. So if you have concentra concentration aura up and you have spiritual focus talented, you will have no pushback when you cast, fla when you cast flash of light and holy light, which is uh, really quite valuable. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and take consecration. Um, you are pretty deep into the levels right now, level 51. So it is good in the sense that the early ranks of consecration are just so mana inefficient. It's going to become a little more valuable at this stage, but you're only going to use consecration as we stated once you get a vengeance proc. So at this point, we're going to go three into healing light, increasing the amount healed by your holy light and flash of light spells by 12%. And then we are going to go into either divine intellect or improved lay on hands. We're going to put one into improved lay on hands. There's going to be some small benefit here, uh, giving you some additional sustain, uh, reducing the cooldown by 10 minutes and giving you a uh, 15, giving the target of your lay on hands a 15% bonus to their armor value from items for two minutes. Um, then at this point, we're going to get Improved Blessing of Wisdom. This is going to give you impact against every mob you're fighting. Uh, its Blessing of Wisdom is incredibly strong. This is going to make it even stronger. And then we're going to finish with what, three points into Illumination. So that's going to be the order of operations. So the last build I'm going to share with you guys is a Holy Reckoning build. This is going to be a bit better for people that want to uh, heal. Um, there's also some other implications, which, which we'll get into when I go through the order of operations. But the main difference is that instead of going back into retribution after we respect protection at 32, we're going to go into the holy tree and get divine favor, improve blessing of wisdom, stuff of that sort. All right, so here we are built out to level 32 in the protection tree. I'm going to proceed from this point. We're going to put two more into Reckoning and one into Sank. Then we're going to move right into Holy, putting five into Divine Strength. At this point, you can make a judgment call between Improved Seal of Righteousness for, imp for increased single target damage or Spiritual Focus for that 100% uh, uh, pushback immunity if you, if you, really, if you put Concentration Aura on. Um, for this, we're just going to go with Spiritual Focus. There are PvE and PvP applications to this, but just make the judgment call as you see fit. We're going to put one into Consecration, three into Healing Light, one into Improve Lay on Hands, opening up the next tier. Now we have another choice here where we can do, go five right into Illumination just to open up Divine Favor a little bit faster, but Improved Blessing of Wisdom is just so strong that we're going to put two into Improved Blessing of Wisdom just to delay Divine Favor a little bit. We're going to put five into Illumination, opening up Divine Favor finally, and then we're going to put the final point into Improve Lay on hands. I guess you have one more point, but you're going to respec anyway, so you might you can throw it into a divine intellect. So that's going to be it for this. We're going to quickly talk about stat priority. You guys probably know that stats are pretty streamlined in what they do in classic. Uh, strength is going to increase your AP by two per point of strength. Uh, you need s seven strength is approximately one DPS because that's equivalent to 14 attack power. Um, a little side note of strength though that is kind of impactful with a uh, paladin is that it does increase the amount of damage that can be blocked with a shield. Uh, not the chance, but the amount of damage that can be blocked and that dual uh, that dual purpose is going to uh, push strength as the number one stat to get for sure for the uh, Reckoning build. Agi is going to improve your attack power with ranged weapons, obviously a non-factor for Paladins, but uh, more importantly it's going to increase your chance to score a critical hit with a weapon and give you some dodge. So it's a 1% crit chance per 20 points of Agi, I think that nets out to 0.05% per point of Agi. Uh, dodging is the same, you need 20 points in agility and 1% dodge. Um, so with a Reckoning build, Strength is going to be your number one priority, followed by Stamina, followed by Intellect, followed by Agi, followed by Spirit. Agi is pushed more towards the back burner. Crit's not super important for Reckoning. The contrast is the Deep Ret Holy build, uh, with moving into Holy secondarily. Agility is going to be as important as Strength, if not maybe even slightly more important. Uh, proccing that Vengeance is going to be a big priority That's for, for Retribution Paladins. So it's going to be kind of Agi equivalent to Strength, uh, followed by Stamina, followed by Intellect, followed by Spirit. Now while Spirit isn't as beneficial on classes that can self-heal like a paladin it's still worth it on pretty much every class if you find a piece that has good spirit on it just just keep it man just keep it and swap into it with outfitter um see if you can get away with less stamina and throw on the spirit piece uh it's all about being you know adaptive and classic at the end of the day so that's the stat priority uh this is we're gonna move into the two-handed weapon progression i'm not gonna go through each one of these but um i'll stop for a couple seconds on each slide i got some feedback that i was i was ripping through them too quick um so here's 
uh, the two-handed weapon progression. Varigan's Fist is the uh, level 20 class quest uh, weapon for paladins. It is a pretty obnoxious quest, but uh, it's a very strong weapon. So if you do want to take the time to do it, it uh, you know maybe maybe if it's your first paladin or something, you want to do it just to experience the class quest. Uh, it's it's a really cool weapon. It's going to take you to. Shadowfang Keep, though, which you're going to have a bad time doing that. Um, so then moving all the way to 60, this is what we're looking at. Um, again, this all this stuff, you see it in blue there. That links right out to the database, so you can easily access these weapons, find out more information on them. Um, this is going all the way up to 60. Uh, then we got progression, one-handed sword progression here, stuff like Phyto Blade, Sword of Serenity is good. Um, one-handed axe progression um, here, one-handed mace progression. We have shield progression as well, um, and then here are some AOE grinding spots all the way up to 60. Uh, these are all, all alliance grinding spots. I removed the, the, the horde ones, um, so these should all be good to go. And uh, that's pretty much it, guys. That's going to be it for this guy. This was a long one. I'm sorry for dragging on so long. It was just really a lot to get through. Um, thank you so much for your continued support and stuff. If you could follow me on Twitch, I'd appreciate it. Like I said, sorry to, to just keep plugging my Twitch. But uh, I do plan on streaming the demo, and I barely have anyone who follow me on Twitch. Um, so I'm also going to put down all the social media links to the people that help me. Uh, out on this project that want to that, that uh, down in the description below so if you could follow them that would be great and uh, let me know what class you want to see next guys uh, i hope you enjoyed it. i hope you could learn something from this and i'll see you in the next one take it easy